and welcome back to the part 2 of the digestive system. So in the first part, we are actually dealing with the anatomic structures itself and the different functions of the different organs. So for this part 2, let's now talk about the actual process that actually happens inside the digestive system, which is the digestion, the absorption, and the transport processes. So again, just a brief overview, what is the main function of our digestive system? That is number one, to contribute to the homeostasis or the balance of the body by breaking down the food that we ingested into the forms that can be absorbed and used by our body cells. And again, second is also absorb water, vitamins, and minerals that also comes from the food that we eat and it eliminates waste from our body. Definition of important terminologies, these are the terminologies that we will be using later on. First is mechanical digestion, which is physical breakdown of food. Therefore, there are no changes in the chemical makeup of the food. That is mechanical digestion. So basically, again, pag sinabing mechanical digestion, physical lang yung pagbabago ng food. But the chemical composition of this food does not change. That is mechanical digestion. Second is chemical digestion, which is a complex process that reduces the food into its chemical building blocks. A good example of which is rice. We all know that rice or canin is made out of carbohydrates. However, the carbohydrates, the whole carbohydrates present doon sa rice na kakainin natin, yung buong kanin, cannot be utilized by our body because medyo complex pa kasi yung kanyang structure. So what happens is in this chemical digestion is through chemical digestion, the whole, yung parang buong carbohydrate, will be broken down into specific carbohydrates such as glucose so that yung glucose na yon, yung simple substance such as glucose can be utilized by our body for energy. So yun ang good example ng chemical digestion. Also, another important terminology na gagamitin natin mamaya is bolus. Bolus is term used to describe food particles broken down into a soft, flexible, and easily swallowed mass after mechanical digestion. Please do take note that bolus ha is the term after mechanical digestion only. So, pwede kasi nating sabihin yung mechanical digestion is yung chewing, right? Pag chinu natin yung food, nag-iba yung kanyang physical property. Hindi na siya buo, naging para mushy na yung kanyang texture kasi nginuyana natin siya. However, uh, kahit pa paano nagbago na yung itsura niya, ang tawag na po doon is bolus, okay? And we also have the terminology na chyme. Chyme is a soupy liquid created when food is already mixed with digestive juices. So, please do not use the bolus and chyme interchangeably. They have a very different terminology or definition. Again, bolus, after mechanical digestion, please do take note. And chyme is the food that is already mixed with digestive juices. So, we can actually say that the chyme can be first found in the stomach na. Okay? Kasi nandun yung digestive juices natin, basically. So again, important terminologies, mechanical digestion. When we say mechanical digestion, that is only the physical breakdown of food. Nag-iba yung shape niya, nag-iba yung kanyang structure, yung physical structure, however, the chemical makeup of the food is just the same. However, when we say that we are now in the chemical digestion, this is already a complex process that reduces the food into its chemical building blocks already. And again, the bolus is the term used to denote food that is broken down after mechanical digestion or sige, sabihin na natin, after chewing. And yung chyme is a soapy liquid created when food is already mixed with digestive juices. And digestive juices is found in the stomach. So, pwedeng sabihin na yung food, we can term it as chyme once it reaches our stomach. Okay, so the digestive process, please do take note, it happens first in the mouth. So, when we ingest food, yan, ingestion of food and the mastication or chewing, 
please do take note that the scientific terminology for chewing is mastication, right? Ano, yun yung parang scientific term niya, yun, masosyal. <laughs> masosyal na term ng chewing is mastication. And that is yung mechanical digestion. Again, inside the mouth, there are two digestion processes that happens. First is yung mechanical digestion. Mechanical, there is a disrupting of the physical appearance of food. So, that is through ingestion of the food and through mastication or chewing. And then, the other one is a chemical digestion. So, just inside the mouth, may chemical digestion na that actually occurs. And uh, during the chemical digestion, enzymes act on the starch and lipids in the food. And yung una nga dun is our salivary amylase. It converts the starch to smaller molecules such as your maltose, maltotriose, and alpha dextrins. While your lingual lipase, it converts dietary triglycerides to fatty acids and diglycerides. So lipase, di ba? Lipase for lipids. Triglyceride is a lipid. So basically, the lingual lipase will degrade the dietary triglycerides inside our mouth. So, yun, di ba? Sa mouth pa lang, may digestion na that actually occurs. And then again, it can be either mechanical all, only through the ingestion and the mastication. And then the chemical digestion happens due to the presence of the enzyme such as salivary amylase, which again, converts the starch into smaller molecules. And there are lingual lipase, which converts or breaks down the dietary triglyceride. And again, triglyceride is a type of lipid. So here, di ba yun yung term natin kanina, yung bolus? So after mastication or chewing, nag-iba yung itsura, bolus na ang tawag sa food. Next, the esophagus. So ayan, kumain ka after sa bibig, lulunokin na natin ngayon. We will now swallow the food. The uh, scientific term class for swallowing is actually deglutition. I repeat, the scientific term for swallowing is deglutition. So, the deglutition actually has three stages. So, first is a voluntary stage. Diba kasi kapag uh, magsaswallow tayo or lulunok, it is voluntary. We can control it. So, that's why it is voluntary. And bolus is passed through the oropharynx. Please uh, take note ha, the nasopharynx is not a part of the digestive process. It is only involved in respiration. However, kapag nasa oropharynx and laryngopharynx yun yung concern sa ating digestive process. So again, deglutition, swallowing. First is a voluntary stage that happens in the buccal cavity or our oral cavity sa mouth. That is uh, voluntary, right? Kasi we can control yung pag-swallow. So, bolus is passed through the oropharynx. The second stage of deglutition is the pharyngeal stage, wherein the bolus is passed through the pharynx to the esophagus. And then the last stage that happens in the inside the esophagus through deglutition is the esophageal stage wherein the bolus is passed through the esophagus down to the stomach. Also, baka napapansin, since dito, kay voluntary stage, kaya pa natin kontrolin, right, yung pag-swallow natin. However, once you reach the pharyngeal stage and the esophageal stage, these stages are actually involuntary na yung paggalaw. Eh, what happens, ma'am? Why is it that the food is not stuck inside the esophagus? Right? Kasi sabi mo, ma'am, right? Yung voluntary stage only happens in the buccal cavity, yung pag-swallow natin. However, once it reaches the pharyngeal stage and esophageal stage, it is already involuntary. But why is it that the food is not stuck inside the esophagus? Diba? Hindi tayo nag-choke kasi hindi nag-stuck sa esophagus natin yung food. And that is due to the process known as peristalsis. Peristalsis is a progression of coordinated contractions and relaxations of the circular and longitudinal layers of the muscularis of, or our smooth muscle which pushes the bolus onward. Di ba ang bolus after mechanical digestion? So, what happens is, paglunok natin ng food or pag-swallow ng food, dapat dire-diretso yan pabawa papunta sa stomach. 
And ang nangyayari, di ba, hindi naman niya nai-stuck somewhere sa esophagus natin, yung mga kinakain natin. And then again, that is due to the process known as peristalsis. This is again a progression of coordinated contractions and relaxations of the circular and longitudinal layers of the muscularis of our smooth muscle which pushes the bolus onward. Hindi kasi pwede na biglang mag stuck somewhere sa esophagus natin, eh, yung food. Kasi magchuchok tayo doon. Pwede tayo mamatay. So, what happens para dere-derecho siya, pababa sa ating stomach, is the process known as peristalsis. So, again, una, inside the mouth, mechanical digestion, chemical digestion, we will now swallow or deglutition. Inside the esophagus, there is a uh, three major stage that happens here. First is the a voluntary stage that happens in the buccal cavity because we can control the motion ng pagswallow, which is bolus pass through the oropharynx. Next is your pharyngeal stage. Once you reach the pharyngeal stage, this is already involuntary. The movement of food here is already involuntary. So bolus is passed through the oropharynx to the esophagus. And then, the esophageal stage, which is the bolus is passed through the esophagus down to the stomach. Please do take note again of the term, term peristalsis. It is again a progression of coordinated contractions and relaxation of our smooth muscle that pushes the bolus onward. That's why food is not getting stuck inside the esophagus. Okay, so yun, kumain na sa mouth, pharynx. Esophagus, next na dadaanan ng ating food is of course our stomach. So, inside the stomach, there is a process known as propulsion, which is a peristaltic wave which moves the gastric contents from the body of the stomach down to the antrum, which is uh, resulting in the formation of our chyme. Please do take note again that chyme first forms in the stomach. Because yung term na chyme, right, is yung food that is uh, already mixed with digestive juices. And then the digestive juices is of course found in your stomach. That's why chyme is first formed in the stomach through propulsion. And then there is also a process known as retropulsion, which are food particles too large are forced back to the body of the stomach. Because uh, when digestion process actually happens, uh, hindi siya agad-agad lahat na da-digest kasi hindi naman, right, na isang beses lang tayo kakain. So, what if it happens that the food na papunta sa baba through the intestine is not yet uh, too small? It is still too large for it to go past through the small intestine. Retropulsion happens so that the food particles that are still too large that should be pushed down to the stomach or through the small intestine can be go back to the body of the stomach. So, pwede siya bumalik pa siya sa body ng stomach natin para ma-digest pa siya more properly. Kasi masyado pa siyang malaki. That is retropulsion. Okay, so enzymatic digestion of proteins begin in our stomach. There is a presence of our pepsin, which is an enzyme secreted, again, by our chief cells that acts on the breakdown of our proteins. And we also have here gastric lipase. And na naman, di ba, right? Lipase, which degrades, again, lipids such as triglycerides in fats and oils or in fat molecules such as those found in our milk into fatty acids and monoglycerides para mas ma-utilize siya ng ating katawan. Because our body tends to uh, utilize uh, simple substances only. Once a uh, substance, it's still complex. Hindi pa kayang i-utilize kasi ng ating katawan yan. So, what the body does is it will broke down or it will break down the molecule into a simpler substance para magamit natin siya. Okay, so after the stomach, you will now reach the small intestine. There is four phases that happens here. First is through segmentation, which is a localized mixing contractions. Mix chyme with digestive juices and bring food particles in contact with the mucosa for absorption. So basically, the molecules found in food or analytes found in food such as the vitamins, minerals, water. Through segmentation, it can now be absorbed through the bloodstream. 
Second uh, process here, we have the migrating motility complex, which is a peristaltic movement, which begins in the lower portion of our stomach, which pushes the chyme along the small intestine. Third one is, of course, digestion. Please do take note that digestion still happens in the small intestine, okay? There is a notion kasi na sometimes iniisip lang nga natin is digestion happens inside the stomach. But the correct term actually is inside the small intestine may digestion pa rin na nangyayari. Okay? So, inside the small intestine, digestion happens. Complete digestion of carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids. If uh, the digestion process that happens inside the stomach is still not enough, yun yung gagawin ni small intestine mag siya ulit for complete digestion of these substances. And of course, absorption. Absorption of digested food particles and water via diffusion, also facilitated diffusion, osmosis, and active transport. Okay, after the small intestine, dadaan na ngayon yung food particles sa ating large intestine. There is four major process that happens here. First is your hostral churning. Hostra relaxes and remains distended while they fill up. The second one is mass peristalsis, which is a strong peristaltic wave which drives the contents of the colon into the rectum. Third is absorption. Through absorption of the water, the ions such as sodium and chloride and some vitamins. Pa. Back to the bloodstream. And then fourth one is of course the feces formation. And then again, a feces is a solid or semi-solid chyme that has remained in the large intestine after absorption. So feces is stool or yung dumi po natin. And also, please do take note of this one. The defecation reflex. Defecation is the elimination of feces from the rectum through the anus. So basically, the defecation is yung pagdumi po natin. There is actually a thing that happens here why um, pagdumi or the defecation reflex can be controlled, right? Pag nadudumi tayo, di ba, minsan, uh, wrong timing. Minsan, nasa labas tayo, nasa galaan, tapos bigla kang makakaramdam, nakakaiba. <laughs> yan, tumaas yung mga balahibo mo kasi nadudumi ka. But still, hindi naman yan agad-agad lalabas, right? We can control it. At ito yung nangyayari to. So, mass movement. So, ito yung pupu natin. Yan, gumagalaw na siya. Inside the large intestine, papunta sa rectum to the anus. So, there will be stretch, stretching and distension of the rectum and triggering of the two muscle sphincters, either internal or external. Okay? So, what happens if the external anal sphincter is relaxed? So, nirelax natin. Kaya natin tong kontrolin, right? Normally. So, once the external anal sphincter is relaxed, defecation occurs. Okay? So, kaya natin dumumi na. And then, once the external anal sphincter is constricted, pinigilan mo, <laughs> defecation can be postponed. So, again, defecation reflex, mass movement of the feces inside the large intestine to the rectum to the anus, Stretching and extension of the rectum, there can be triggering of the two muscle sphincters either through internal and external. And then, once the external anal sphincter is relaxed, defecation occurs. So, makakadumi na tayo. However, once you constrict this sphincter nga po, defecation can be postponed. Kasi mamaya, <laughs> na wrong timing, di ba? Nasa galaan ka, tapos bigla hang natatae. Di ba? So, para pigilan natin yan. Ganito yun ang nangyayari. Okay, let's now move on to the common disorders or diseases of the digestive system. Please do take note that these are just the most common. There are many, many different diseases that is concerned of the digestive system. These are just the most common encounter, commonly encountered. First is your GERD. GERD or the gastroesophageal reflux disease is a, it is a digestive disorder that occurs when acidic stomach juices or food and fluids back up from the stomach into the esophagus. Uh, inside the stomach as a right, uh, it is acidic. It is known naman right that inside the stomach the environment is acidic. 
So, maraming different purpose yun kung bakit acidic ang inside ang stomach natin. However, in a person experiencing gastroesophageal reflux disease, this acidic juices that contains food or fluids, instead of, di ba, meron tayong peristalsis that pushes the food onward, hindi siya pwedeng pataas eh. Kailangan pababa lang siya, like through the mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, tapos pupuk. However, ang nangyayari kasi kay Jerd is umaangat po from the stomach, yung laman ni stomach, umaangat siya pa, pabalik sa esophagus, which does not normally happen dapat. Because inside the stomach, very acidic class ang environment niya, di ba? May hydrochloric acid nga kasi yan. So, what happens in a individual experiencing Jerd is this stomach acid as well as yung food particles and fluids that is present inside the stomach, backs up to the esophagus. That is what happens in gastroesophageal reflux disease. Also, acute pancreatitis. So, acute pancreatitis, of course, concerns about our pancreas, which is a digestive disorder that occurs due to heavy alcohol intake or biliary tract obstruction. So, yung mga college students, di ba, ito yung panahon madalas na painom-inom, right? Natututo tayo uminom-inom dyan. So, I don't know for everyone, but for some of you, siguro ganun. However, due to the pandemic, hindi nyo pa ito nararanasan siguro na mag-night out, right? Especially mga second year lang kayo. But, if in any case, pigilan nyo na mapunta kayo sa mga dark areas na yun, nagkakaroon kayo ng heavy alcohol intake because... Aside from acute pancreatitis, marami pang different diseases that is concerned with heavy alcohol intake. But also, please do take note na hindi lang naman heavy alcohol intake ha ang nagtitrigger ng acute pancreatitis. Also, biliary tract obstruction can trigger acute pancreatitis. Gallstones. Gallstones, of course, nasa gallbladder to. These are pieces of solid material formed in the gallbladder due to excessive cholesterol or insufficient bowel salts or lecithin. Next, ito medyo common talaga to, yung lactose intolerance. Of course, when absorptive salts of the small intestine fail to produce enough lactase. Lactase is the enzyme that degrades lactose. Okay? So, if there is not enough lactase inside our system, lactose cannot be broken down. That does lactose intolerance occur? Undigested lactose in the chyme causes fluid to be retained in the feces. Bacterial fermentation of the undigested lactose results in the production of gases. Fun fact: um, Inside our uh, gastrointestinal tract, kasi meron tayong tinatawag na mga normal flora or normal bacteria. So, those bacteria that are found inside our gastrointestinal tract, it is not harmful, it is actually beneficial. So, mga good bacteria ito. However, what happens po kasi here, yung mga bacteria, the commonly normal flora or normal bacteria that is found in the gastrointestinal tract are actually lactose fermenters. Okay? So, may encounter niya sa bacteriology niyo. Yung mga, again, yung mga common bacteria that is found in the gastrointestinal tract are actually lactose fermenters. Okay? So, yung lactose fermenters na yan can actually be observed in the laboratory using test tubes and mga agar or yung mga pampatubo ng bacteria. And sometimes, the byproduct of the lactose fermenter bacteria is the production of gases. And you can actually, again, you can actually notice it in the laboratory. Sa mga test tube, lagyan ng agar or yung pampatubo ng bacteria. Yan. Makakita kayo doon, nagpatubo kayo ng bacteria na lactose fermenter. Sometimes there is a production of gases inside the test tube. Which is, can happen inside a person who is lactose intolerant. Okay, so fun fact lang naman. Also, appendicitis. Appendicitis is an inflammation of the appendix. Di ba pag may itis, mga inflammation yan. So, since appendicitis, inflammation of the appendix is termed appendicitis again, is preceded by obstruction of the lumen of the appendix by chyme, inflammation, a foreign body, a carcinoma of the cesium, stenosis, or kinking of the organ. 
And we also have peptic ulcer disease. An, an ulcer is a crater-like lesion in a membrane. Ulcers develop in areas of the gastrointestinal tract exposed to acidic gastric juices are called peptic ulcers. The ulcers kasi parang uh, lesions siya or sugat. So just imagine inside the stomach, very acidic ang environment. Uh, meron kang lesions doon or mga sugat-sugat inside your stomach. Napakasakit po ng sakit na ulcer. Okay? Imagine nyo na lang, di ba? Ako pag kayo ba yung nasusugatan, tapos binuhusan nyo ng asido yan, di ba masakit? And what if nasa loob pa ng katawan? You can't do anything about it. But that is peptic ulcer disease. That is the end of discussion for this week. If you have any questions or clarifications, please do reach out to me at this email and in Canvas.